The year is 1967. The world is in the throes of the space race and intense rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. While the Americans were eyeing the moon, the Soviets had a different, far more dangerous target in mind, Venus. Swathed in thick, impenetrable clouds, the planet had long been considered a possible twin of Earth, perhaps a second home hidden behind a veil of mystery. But what they were about to find would shatter those illusions and push the boundaries of human engineering to their limits. What you're about to witness is the extraordinary story of how, in the 1970s, Soviet scientists fought physics time and planetary hostility to become the first humans to land machines on Venus and send back data images, audio, even surface chemistry. But this isn't just a story about space exploration. It's a story about endurance failure, creativity, and what happens when you dare to ask what's underneath the clouds. So buckle up. We're diving headfirst into the most hostile environment any space probe has ever dared enter. And you'll want to watch to the very end because the legacy of this daring feat still echoes in the missions we plan for Venus today. In the early 20th century, Venus was romanticized as Earth's twin. Roughly the same size, similar in mass and orbiting within the so-called habitable zone of our solar system, it wasn't wild to imagine oceans, forests, and maybe even life beneath its pearly clouds. Early telescopes revealed very little, just an endless layer of white that gave no hint of the hell beneath. By the 1950s and 60s, speculative fiction had exploded with tales of lush Venusian jungles. Even respected scientists theorized about shallow oceans and mild climates. But radar observations from Earth began painting a different picture. Instead of signs of water or land masses, the radar bounced back signals consistent with a hot, rocky desert. Yet those results were debated. Confirmation bias ran deep. After all, how could a planet so similar to Earth turn out so differently? The only way to be sure was to go there. Enter the Soviet Union with its Venera program, an ambitious and ultimately historic series of missions designed to pierce the Venusian clouds and land on the surface. Venera 4 launched on June 12, 1967, its mission to become the first spacecraft to successfully enter another planet's atmosphere and transmit data back to Earth. The probe approached Venus at a blistering 40,000 kilometer cornboard orange. As it slammed into the planet's thick upper atmosphere, its parachute deployed. Initially, readings seemed optimistic, pressure hovered around one atmosphere, and temperatures were a balmy 30 degrees, but then the numbers began to rise and fast. One atmosphere became five, then 10, then 22. Temperatures skyrocketed past 200 derpaders. Before engineers could process the data, the signal went dead. Venera 4 had been crushed. For many, this would be a failure. But for Soviet scientists, it was confirmation Venus wasn't Earth's twin. It was a pressure cooker. Back in Moscow, engineers began working around the clock. They now understood Venus's conditions were unlike anything on Earth, and any lander would need to be built like a submarine made of armor. Venera 7 was born out of this realization. Its titanium hull was two inches thick and built to withstand up to 180 atmospheres of pressure. Inside, scientists installed a suite of instruments to measure temperature, pressure, and atmospheric composition. But their biggest challenge time, Venera 4 had shown that probes wouldn't last long in Venus's atmosphere. So the Soviets redesigned the descent strategy. Instead of drifting down slowly on a parachute, the new lander would fall faster, minimizing exposure. They even designed a parachute that would deliberately fail melting at 200 degree days to allow the probe to free fall the rest of the way. Venera 7 launched in August 1970. It worked perfectly until the parachute tore earlier than expected. The probe slammed into the Venusian surface at 60 km coming out of reach. Again, silence. But weeks later, while reviewing telemetry, engineers found something astonishing. A weak signal had been transmitted for 23 minutes after impact. Venera 7 had survived. It was humanity's first successful landing on another planet.
The success of Venera 7 fueled further innovation. Venera 8 was designed with passive cooling systems made of lithium nitrate, which absorbed heat and bought precious extra minutes of operation. This mission also succeeded. For an entire hour, Venera 8 sent back data, including the first light level readings from the surface of Venus. The environment was bright like an overcast day on Earth, but nothing lived there. No oceans, no plants, just scorched rock. But what about pictures that would come with Venera 9? Launched in 1975, Venera 9 carried a new camera system, two periscopes that poked out of the lander's body. The probe shell was reinforced to endure 500 degrees and crushing pressures. Once on the surface, one of the lens caps popped off successfully. What came next stunned the world the first black and white image from the surface of another planet. The image showed flat slabs of stone under a thick haze, a dead world. A world that had once possibly been like Earth, now completely hostile. Here's where the story becomes more than science. Imagine the tension in the Soviet control rooms. These weren't automated uploads to cloud servers. These were engineers, many in their 20s and 30s, listening to faint pulses of data from a world 38 million kilometers away, with no guarantee they'd hear anything at all. In an interview decades later, one Venera engineer recalled, it was as if we were holding our breath for hours. Every tone, every blip, it was like listening to a heartbeat of a machine we couldn't see on a planet no one had touched. Another engineer admitted he cried when the first image came in. It wasn't just rocks, it was proof. Proof that we could reach another Kulin and survive there, if only briefly. Their pride wasn't political, it was human. They'd faced a literal hell and left a mark. Between Venera 7 and 14, the Soviet Union landed successfully on Venus eight times. They recorded atmospheric compositions, wine speeds, soil chemistry, and even audio. Venera 14 carried a microphone and drill capturing both the sound of its descent and the brief moment it touched the soil. It's easy to forget how advanced this was. No GPS, no AI, just raw engineering and courage. And to this day, no other nation has landed a functioning spacecraft on Venus's surface. NASA plans to try in the 2030s. But even now, scientists rely heavily on Venera data to model Venusian conditions. The missions also help scientists understand why Venus ended up so different from Earth. A runaway greenhouse effect triggered by volcanic outgassing and lack of water transformed the planet into a furnace. And it's a sobering lesson. If Earth's climate spirals out of control, Venus is what we could become. There's something haunting about Venus. It's not just the surface that kills, it's the story it tells. Once possibly like Earth now, a furnace, a place where probes are crushed in minutes, and yet it's the destination we kept returning to. Why? Because we're driven to understand, driven to reach, driven to see what's on the other side of the impossible. The Venera missions weren't just Soviet victories. They were human ones. They showed what's possible when curiosity wins over comfort, when we choose to knock on the door of the unknown. And today, as we plan new missions to Venus, we owe those engineers a debt. They were the first to try and the first to endure. So what can we take away from the story of surviving Venus in the 1970s? First nature doesn't care about what we expect. It simply is. And science works best when it listens. Second great achievements come from great risk. The Venera engineers knew their chances were slim, but they tried anyway. And when they failed, they learned. When they succeeded, they rewrote history. And finally, even in a world as hostile as Venus, human courage can make a mark. That's the essence of exploration. So next time you see Venus shining in the sky, remember it's not just a planet, it's a chapter of human resilience. And maybe just maybe one day we'll return.